iPad Pro, M2, 12.9, or Surface Pro 9. Both have Pro in their names, both are similarly priced-ish, and also both offer pretty good laptop and tablet experiences, but which should you buy? Well, both of these have had a pretty mild spec bump in late 2022, with the 6th gen iPad Pros getting the new M2 processor, an Apple Pencil hover feature, which is as underwhelming as it sounds, ProRes video capture, and also Wi-Fi 6E. While the new Surface Pro 9 gets 12th generation Intel U-series i5 and i7 CPUs, we also get faster RAM, a removable and therefore upgradable SSD, studio quality mics, improved repairability, Wi-Fi 6E as well, and a couple of new colors like this very nice sapphire blue. Either way though, prices range from pretty reasonable at the lower end, all the way up to mortgage deposit level. I mean, top spec, add a keyboard, add a pen, maybe three grand? It's pretty ridiculous. But wait, 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 I know what you're thinking. Tom, you've got the wrong Surface Pro 9. This is the Intel one, but if you're gonna compare it to the ARM-powered M2 iPad, then really you should compare it to the ARM-powered SQ3 version, the non-Intel Surface Pro 9, which is a fair point. And there are advantages to the SQ3 version, including much longer battery life, 5G connectivity, and some webcam noise reduction and effects via the AI chip which sounds like the better option, but I don't think it is because like the previous Surface Pro X, which really the SQ3 version of this Pro 9 replaces, because it's not running x86 Intel chips, all the applications have to be emulated on Windows. And emulation has improved since the Surface Pro X, it's got better, but we still have a long way to go. It just doesn't compete with Apple and the M2 MacBooks right now. Hopefully one day soon, but right now, if you are gonna buy a Surface Pro 9 and use it like a laptop, unless you know for a fact that the applications you want to use are optimized for ARM on Windows, I would get the Intel version, which is also a couple of hundred dollars cheaper. I will caveat that saying I haven't reviewed the SQ3 version yet. I am keen to try that and test it side by side. And actually, if you do fancy uh, seeing a comparison between these two with the SQ3 Pro 9, then I'll leave a link to Max Tech's video in the description below. Moving on, and while these two may look pretty similar, boot them up and it's clear they're from completely different universes. Windows 11 on the Surface is as functional and unstylish as ever, but once you add a Surface Pen or a signature keyboard, this becomes a full-on laptop PC experience. In fact, the Surface really is much more at home as a laptop than a tablet. Regular Windows apps run fine, multitasking is easy, everyday tasks feel slick and lag-free, and that 120 hz refresh rate definitely helps. And you can even get away with some light gaming, or more realistically, perhaps stream them via NVIDIA's GeForce Now or Xbox Cloud, which of course you can also do on the iPad. Now, iPad OS 16 here definitely focuses on the tablet experience. And as a tablet, this blows Windows out of the water. It's not even close. It's slicker, far easier to use. The App Store is fantastic and everything just works. We also have a smooth 120Hz refresh rate and mobile gaming is great, especially with the Apple Arcade, which actually offers some decent games. But the thing is, and the question we've been asking ourselves since the original iPad launched 12 years ago-ish, 2010, is can this replace my laptop? And 90% of the time, yes, probably. But honestly, as someone who has all these devices around them all the time, I never really want to take my iPad uh, and use it as a laptop unless I'm just doing some emails or some writing or something fairly basic. Yes, you can train yourself to get better and use this efficiently. And you also do have Stage Manager now with resizable and overlapping apps and app switching. And together with a fantastic Magic Keyboard, it's not far off. But then for simpler tasks, you may as well just go with the iPad Air and maybe a Magic Keyboard and save a bunch of money and maybe the Surface Laptop or Surface Laptop Go on this side. But the problem is this is the iPad Pro. It's for professionals. And while there are some definite professional use cases, particularly for designing and drawing, and except for a handful of apps, including the upcoming DaVinci Resolve, which I'm very excited for, we just don't have desktop level apps on the iPad. So at the end of the day, picking between these two really is all about the software and the apps that you use and the flexibility and the user experience you need or prefer. Everything else, including the hardware, comes a distant second. And so also when it comes to performance, the comparison here is a bit moot really. They're completely different operating systems, completely different chips, and also the use cases mostly are also pretty different. And they're both really nice to use, just in slightly different ways. The other issue, and really the biggest frustration with the iPad, is just that untapped potential. If we had desktop level apps, if we had you know, a slimmed down Mac OS on here instead of iPad OS, and we could really take advantage of that M2 chip in Premiere Pro or Blender or other desktop apps, then this would just hands down completely destroy this. But the fact that we are limited to mobile or iPad apps on here 
means that the vast majority of the time we're just not utilizing that crazy performance of the M2, which is a real shame. I do understand why. I mean, if they gave this desktop apps, then no one would buy a MacBook Air anymore. Uh, and the same with MacBooks. If they could put a touchscreen on there, then it would eat into iPad sales. They want them to be two distinct products and they want you to buy both. So the M2 is just a bit restricted, although it does mean that it'll keep everything feeling fast for a long time. But whichever laptop or tablet or phone you have, it's always smart to use a VPN. And this video is very kindly sponsored by the lovely folks over at Surfshark. I work with these guys a lot, and they're genuinely the only VPN my wife and I use, whether we're at home streaming, US Netflix or Hulu, or out and about, and I want to keep my data safe when browsing and checking my emails, my bank, or even logging into my YouTube account, as Surfshark's clean web tool helps to block ads, tracking, malware, and other nasty things. And there's an app for nearly everything out there. Plus, just one account lets you use an unlimited number of devices, which, as you can imagine, comes in very handy for me. But the best bit is if you click the link below or enter the code TECHCHAP at the checkout, you can get 85% off and three months extra for free. Plus, you can get your money back within 30 days if you're not super duper satisfied. So why not give Surfshark VPN a try and stay safe online? Design-wise, they're both basically identical to their previous generations, and that's no bad thing. They both still feel fresh, we have narrow bezels, fantastic build quality, and lovely screens. The surface is a fair bit thicker, though, to make room for the cooling and the vents for the CPU, and it's also around 29% heavier, meaning the iPad is a lot more comfortable to use as a tablet and even hold one-handed. But the Surface has a bit of an ace up its sleeve in the form of this kickstand, because unlike the iPad, even with the Magic Keyboard, which only gives you a little bit of flexibility. With the awesome kickstand on the surface, you can basically have any angle you like, all the way down to nearly flat. And actually, this is a great angle for doing some drawing or uh, typing, because you've got just a little bit of an incline, so it's quite comfortable. And so it also means, while this does jab into your leg a little bit, if you are using it on your lap, you do have a bit more flexibility with this. Although, if you're happy with this level of flexibility, then I would probably say this is more comfortable to use on your lap, because it doesn't dig in like the sharp edge of the uh, Microsoft Surface Stand. But on a desk, I think the Surface wins uh, because of that flexibility. And also, I do appreciate that the Surface keyboards can pop up and give you a more comfortable typing position as well. And this keyboard also hides the Surface Pen inside, which I think is actually an even better storage option than the uh, magnetic Apple Pencil 2 that we have on the iPad, although that's very good as well. As for the screens, they're both very nice, sharp and smooth, thanks to the high refresh rates. And while the Surface's 13-inch PixelSense Flow IPS touch display does look great, and we also get Dolby Vision IQ HDR, it's color accurate enough for most workloads, and it's also reasonably bright at 440 nits, the problem is the iPad screen is just so much better. This gets Apple's top draw mini LED liquid retina XDR IPS panel, which will give you up to 600 nits in SDR and a whopping 1600 in HDR. It's more color accurate and the contrast is way better. The two and a half thousand or so local dimming zones mean that dark areas of the screen look so much darker and you get those inky blacks as the cliche goes. In terms of cameras, I think it's a pretty clear win for the iPad. Although credit to the Surface, we do have the webcam on the top horizontal bezel, which we have on the new 10th gen iPad, but the Pros for some reason still have it on the left side. So when you are standing central to the iPad, you are off center. But generally the camera quality, the fact that you can shoot in 4K, we have stage manager, and also the triple setup on the back with the main, the ultra wide and the LiDAR sensor, which is great for AR and well, mainly just using the measuring app. The Surface Pro 9 is fine, and we do also have that weird 10 megapixel camera, but generally, the cameras on the iPad are much better. Now, in terms of ports and connectivity, I'm gonna give the win to the Surface Pro 9 because we get two Thunderbolt 4 ports now, and also the Surface connector on the other side, which you really wanna use for charging, although you can charge via USB, but then it frees these up. But the fact that we do now have Thunderbolt 4 on here opens up a lot more options for docks. Whereas on the iPad, we have just the single USB-C, also Thunderbolt 4, uh, so you can also plug in your external storage drives and your SD cards, well, via adapters, and you can use it on iPad OS like that. And the Magic Keyboard does add an extra USB-C, which is really handy for charging both the iPad and the keyboard. Both Wi-Fi 6E, although this does get the option of 5G, whereas that's only available on the SQ3 version. So it depends what you want, really. But for me, also with the Windows OS versus iPad OS, I think connectivity is a little bit better on the Surface. Now, the thing is, you can buy these tablets as just tablets if you want, but you shouldn't. No one should do that. If you're going to buy a Pro Surface or a Pro iPad, get the keyboard with it. Yes, it does add quite a lot more money, particularly the Magic Keyboard, but it gives you so much more functionality and versatility for these tablets. It does turn them into proper two-in-ones. 
The Surface Slim Pen 2 and also the Apple Pencil Gen 2 are both lovely to use as well, especially if you are a doodler, a drawer, or a designer. Although I think I do prefer the Apple Pencil just because of how it feels in the hand. And also there are some great iPad drawing and note-taking apps, including Apple's brand new Freeform app, which is basically Microsoft OneNote. As for battery life, well, it's a pretty clear win for the iPad. Apple say you'll get about 10 hours on this, and that's pretty much bang on. In my everyday varied use, I get more like eight to nine hours. But you know, if you are just gonna watch videos and you'll easily get 12 hours on this, Whereas on the Surface Pro 9, I'm getting more like seven and a half hours, which is still pretty good considering we have a full fat Intel CPU in here and it's Windows 11, which of course is not as optimized as an M2 chip on iPad OS. And also I guess if battery is really important to you and you don't mind some of the other limitations, then you could consider the SQ3 version of this, which actually bumps the battery by like three or four more hours. So apart from the keyboard, which if you are buying either of these Pro devices, you should definitely get, how should you spec these? Well, I reckon the 256 gig and 512 iPad Pros are the best value. And also I would avoid the cellular 5G model as it's almost 200 pounds more. And you can always just use your phone as a hotspot instead. Although I guess if your company's paying for it, then go nuts. As for the Surface Pro, the $1,000 base spec Intel i5 is a bit of a bargain compared with the rest of the range. Bumping the storage adds hundreds. So I would probably opt for an external SSD instead, like a Crucial X8 or a Samsung T7, as 256 gigs is pretty limited if you're gonna use this as your main work laptop. And also last but not least, if you are tempted by one of these, but don't quite have the budget, then I would definitely consider the last gen versions. Yes, these are a little bit faster, but they're not that much different than the Surface Pro 8 or the M1 iPad Pro. And if you can find those still in stock and on sale, then I would probably go for that instead. So let's wrap this up. And it's an interesting comparison because I suspect from the start, you already knew which one you would go for. It's really gonna come down to Windows, or iPad OS. And it's pretty simple, really. If you want the best tablet, go for the iPad. If you want the best laptop, go for the Pro 9. But they both just have these frustrating limitations, the lack of desktop apps to take advantage of the M2 on the iPad, and the fact that even with the SQ3 emulated uh, ARM version of this, we're still just not there compared to Apple in terms of the performance. Which one would I go for? Well, if we're assuming I don't have another laptop, then I would probably go with the Pro 9. Uh, if I can bring my MacBook Pro with me, I generally edit and work on the MacBook Pro 16, then I would also go with the iPad. It keeps me in that lovely and warm Apple ecosystem. But what do you think? Which one would you go for between the two or none of the above? Let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions at all about these, also let me know in the comments. And if you did enjoy the video, I want to see more from me, which hopefully you did uh, because you watched the whole thing, then a cheeky like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. Oh, and don't forget to give Surfshark VPN a try. 85% off and three months extra for free with my code TechChap or by clicking the link below.